and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new stamp set, Hey There, and it's coordinating dies. So let's go ahead and check it out. This set has a super cute sheep, it has a cow, and a horse, we have a pig, and a goat. Of course we have a little chicken and some tiny little chicks too. And we've got a cute little barn. We also have a fence for helping to set the scene, a little bow or bow tie, a little flower, and a small heart, and a little word bubble in which you can stamp I heart moo or I heart you in it. We have an egg and a little tin can. We also have some great sentiments. We have sorry, it's past your birthday. <laughs> sorry, you're feeling bad. Happy birthday to moo. Hey there and from the whole herd, which works with happy birthday and hey there, we also have you are the best. I'm using my Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And for the sheep here, I'm just gonna be using some warm grays just so that he's not just plain white, but he still looks white, maybe kind of a little bit dirty. I also did that for the chicken as well. I'll add a little color to the sheep's face and then give him some dark little hooves there. Next up, I'm gonna be adding some color to this little cow. And I want him to be a white cow with black spots. But I wanted the black spots to kind of have a little more of something to them. So I'm using some dark warm grays and I'm blending them out dark to medium to light so that they're a little bit more interesting than maybe just a flat black color. And I think it makes him look kind of a little more 3D too. Next, I'm gonna be coloring in the horse. I'm gonna do a dark brown horse with an even darker brown mane because I think that's gonna look really nice with the rest of my critters on my cards. But I love that you could really play around with the colors of the horse depending on what look that you were going for. And to help me decide where my darkest areas should go, I'm putting them under the hair that's overlapping the body or the neck that's overlapping the body, areas where there might be shadows. I'm gonna add my darkest marker and then blend those out. And that really gives them a cool kind of 3D look and it makes it easy for me to decide where my shadows are gonna be. Next up, I'm gonna be coloring in the pig and I love coloring him because I love these pink markers. Oh my gosh, the three of them together are just so pretty. And I'm using the same idea for him. So I'm gonna add my darkest areas where his ears overlap his head and where his head overlaps his body. So I'll lay down my light marker and my dark and then blend it back out with my lightest marker. For my little chicken, I'm just gonna give him this little red and a little orange and that's it with that warm gray along the bottom. And honestly, he's my favorite of the whole set. I just love that chicken so much. And then here I'm gonna be coloring in my little goat in the same exact way. So I'm gonna kinda just keep repeating and that way my characters all kinda match and look really cool together too. I'm gonna give a little light yellow to my chick. So he's gonna look like a little baby chicken. <laughs> and then next, of course, I have to color a red barn. I had to go with the classic red barn, but really you could color this barn in any color depending on what you want to match your card. So I'm gonna color in that red and then give it a brown roof and brown door. But once again, you could do a white roof, a gray roof, et cetera, just depending on what's gonna look nicest for your card, you can customize it to match, which is really fun. I'm gonna use my same idea with my warm gray markers for my picket fence and my speech bubbles too. So I'm just adding a little bit of that warm gray on there and you can see it just gives them a little bit of that 3D look like you added just a little something but they're still white, like the traditional white picket fence. Now here are the coordinating dies which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. And now you have to do is take one of those dies and line it up with your stamped image, hold it in place with some low tack tape and then you can run it through my, your die cut machine and get perfectly cut images every single time. And I just love seeing all of the characters from the set all lined up. They're just so cute and just adorable together. And I love how you can mix and match them for your card. The other thing you can do is you could add that little bow there to the little critter's hair and you can stack them too. So you can stack the chicken on top of a lot of the other critters, which is a really, really cute look. And then you can kind of layer some of the accessories like the little chick and the egg um, and just kind of create really cute and sweet scenes. For my first card, I'm gonna stamp out some images from our new Happy Village stamp set. So we've got that sun and cloud, and then also an individual cloud, and that's gonna help me kind of set my scene, and I love mixing and matching stamp sets. I'm creating a card base that's actually four and a quarter by five and a quarter. I was just feeling a little weird today. I wanted to make my card just kind of a funky size. I don't know why I love doing that. Now here we've got some really rainbow paper, which I'm layering onto my card base, and then I've got some watercolor wishes paper that I'm gonna stamp with the hey there from the whole herd little sentiment. 
Next, I'm going to take some watercolor wishes paper in the green color, and I'm going to die cut that with my simple stitch till side border. And this is going to be my little ground for my critters to stand on. Next, I am going to take some adhesive and put it on the back just along the, the top of that hill so that I can layer my pieces and kind of see how they're all gonna fit. So I'm gonna take my barn and my little fence pieces that kind of help set the scene and layer those on the back to get a look that I really, really like. Then I'm gonna take the whole thing and kind of decide how everything's gonna look because that grass is just way too tall. So once I kind of place things and I think it's gonna look nice, what I'll do is take my pencil and I'll make a little tick mark so that I know where to trim it off. Once my grass piece is the perfect size, then I can go ahead and add some adhesive to the back of it and then layer it onto my blue sky piece. And I love using the watercolor wishes for skies and grass because it's kind of like a solid color, but it's got a little bit something extra going on. So now that I've got all my pieces on there, I'm gonna start layering on my clouds and my sun, and then I'm gonna use some foam dots for all of my characters. So first I'm gonna layer the little chicken on top of the pig, place him in the center, and then that way I can easily place my other characters there. And they look like they're, I like them because they almost look like they're posing for a picture, which I think is just adorable. Now I'm gonna take that whole thing and layer that onto the really rainbow paper. And I think that rainbow paper just makes it such a happy card, and I can't wait to send this to someone. Next up, we're gonna be making a pivot pop-up. So this is a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card, and it is a portrait card, so it's a tall card. And I'm gonna layer some gotta have gingham paper on there. So we've got some gingham on the front, and we're gonna use the same gingham, but in the straight version on the inside. So you'll see that's one long piece that I'm gonna trim into two five and a half inch tall pieces. And then that way I can layer them along the inside, but it'll still look like one long piece. The first thing I'm gonna do though is stamp my sentiment, which is sorry it's past your birthday. <laughs> so I'm gonna stamp that first and then I can layer my pieces. So I just kinda of take my pattern paper and kinda of put them right in the crease of the card and that helps me know that they're lining up exactly. So you see I kinda of butt it up into the crease of the card and it looks really good and then I can press down. I am using a dotted rectangle cutting some more watercolor wishes paper and then I'm also going to use a grassy hillside border and cut some new perfectly plaid spring paper. I'll use that same sized rectangle die to then die cut that grass piece so that my piece is going to layer perfectly on top of my rectangle and still have that really pretty dotted detail. Then I can just add that grass on there and I'm starting to set my scene for the front of my card. Now here I'm using the new speech bubbles die and the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out the word hello that's included in the die set. So I'll die cut the word hello first and then I'm gonna die cut the little smiley face next to it. So I'm just gonna line that up, hold it in place with my tape and then run that through my die cut machine. Then the next step I'll do after that is actually lining up my speech bubble with it. I find it easier to die cut the words first and then die cut the speech bubble. It's just easier to line up. So now I can go ahead and run that through my die cut machine and now I have this really cool kind of 3D die cut speech bubble for my little horse to be saying hello. <laughs> so I'm gonna add my horse with some foam tape and I'll add my little hello bubble with some foam tape too. Then I'll take some more foam tape and then add that to the front of the card. And so this is really easy, nice and simple for the front because we're gonna have our wow big thing on the inside. So here I've got my pivot pop-up mechanism and I've die cut it from some gotta have gingham paper. I'm gonna fold it in half away from myself first. I'll then open it back up and there's some score lines on the diagonal. So I'm gonna fold that towards myself and then I'll fold the other one on the diagonal towards myself as well. I'm then gonna take my index fingers and place them behind and push in to create this cool arrow shape. Next, I'm gonna add some strong adhesive to the triangle part of the arrow. So I'm gonna add some adhesive to one side and then I'm gonna flip it over and add adhesive to the other side as well. Once that's done, I'm gonna peel off the liner tape on just one of those triangles. Then I'm gonna open my mechanism so it's flat, and that little circle there is a viewfinder to find the inner score line of your card. So I'm gonna find that score line, and then I can press down when it's perfectly in the center. I'm then gonna push in again to create that arrow shape one more time, and then I can peel off that liner tape and then close my card shut, and now my mechanism is going to be perfectly placed on the inside of my card. The next step is to take my panel die here and die cut some watercolor wishes paper. So I've die cut one panel and then a second panel. The next step is to fold these. So I'm gonna to fold towards myself along that long center score line and then I'm gonna fold the tab away from myself. 
I'll then repeat the same thing with the other one. I'll fold the tab away from myself and fold that middle score line towards myself. I can then add some little adhesive there, some strong adhesive to those little tab pieces. I'll peel up that liner piece and then I'm gonna fit these two pieces in together to create one long panel piece. Next, I'm gonna use the hills included in the pivot pop-up die piece and I'm gonna die cut that perfectly plaid spring plaid again so that it matches the front. There also are some score lines on these pieces, so I'm gonna fold those towards myself and then I'm gonna add a ton of adhesive to the back of my grass pieces. I can then take those grass pieces and line them up on my long panel. And so this is gonna look really cool because now we've got a whole scene that we've created on this panel. My next step is then to take the whole thing and push in, folding it into kind of like an accordion shape. Now when I create pivot pop-ups, I like to decorate the whole panel first. So now I'm just gonna take a bunch of stamped images from Hey There and add some adhesive to the back and line them up creating a really cute scene. I just love decorating with all my critters and I also love making pivot pop-ups. They are so much fun. So if you wanna see some more pivot pop-ups, make sure to check out our intro to pivot pop-up video. We'll link it in the description below so that you guys can go check it out because these are awesome. I just love them. My last step is to add a little I heart moo to my word bubble. I'm gonna color in that heart with a little red marker to kind of help it stand out. And then I'll add that there for the cow to be saying that, which I think is so, so cute. Next up, I'm gonna go back to my mechanism and I'm gonna add some adhesive on those two little side panel pieces, just like that. Then I can go ahead and peel up the liner paper and then I'm gonna take my panel piece and I'm gonna line it up in the center of the mechanism. You'll see I'm gonna put my head right over so I can really line that up and then I'll press down really well so that adhesive picks up the panel. My next step is to kind of guide this mechanism in. So the first time you do it, you wanna help kind of guide it and then press down really well to kind of get that paper folded and kind of tell the paper what it needs to do. So then you're gonna open it up again and then you're gonna play with it a few times because the more you play with it, the better it's gonna work. So you'll see that first time I gotta kind of play with it the second time and now look, it's working perfectly. So I just love pivot pop-ups, oh my gosh. I love playing with them. I love giving them to people because they're so cute and they're so happy and just so much fun. And this one was really, really easy and really, really simple to make because it was just stamped and colored images and pattern paper. So I could really even make a couple of these and have a few of them on hand to give to my friends. And a big thank you to Jen for letting me recreate this adorable card. Speaking of adorable cards, I'm gonna be recreating a really awesome card by Elena, and I'm using the brand new Peekaboo backdrop. So I die cut some white cardstock, and then I'm gonna look through my gotta have gingham paper and pick out a paper, and I'm gonna go with that blue gingham. I think that's so pretty and perfect for a sky. So I've die cut that to five and a half by four and a quarter, cause that's the size of that Peekaboo backdrop. I'm then gonna die cut some cilantro cardstock with the die cut, but I'm only using the rectangles this time instead of the frame. So you'll see there I now have rectangles that are perfectly sized because I use the die to cut them. Now here I'm taking my simple stitch till side border and I'm gonna die cut some hills in kind of various slopes and sizes for this little scene. So that one was kind of a steeper slope. This is a more general slope that we're gonna add there to that top one. And so you can mix and match them. And I think it looks really cool when they're all different because that makes it look like there's lots of cute little tiny different scenes. So here I'll do this last one. I'm gonna make it really steep so that it's really different from the other ones. And then I can start working on my card base. So my card base this is gonna be standard size four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna start by adding my gotta have gingham paper to that card base first. Then I'm gonna add my peekaboo frame and I'm gonna use uh, my glue tube to do that because I find it easier than trying to get the tape runner into all of those areas. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my glue tube and then I can lay that right on top. And this is what I love about making these peekaboo backdrop cards is they're really, really quick. So I can just start popping in all of my layers now and it's gonna give me this cool, almost like a comic book kind of look, like we've got these teeny little scenes and you can kind of see what the farm critters are doing. So here I die cut some black cardstock with a sentiment banner and I am gonna go ahead and do some heat embossing. So I'm gonna take my powder tool here and run it across this banner so that way my heat embossing powder only sticks to my sticky Versamark ink that I'm stamping with right now. So I'm gonna stamp with that ink and then put my heat embossing powder on there and you'll see now it's only sticking to the sentiment and not to the rest of that banner. 
And then I can go ahead and heat it up and I'm gonna have this nice bright white sentiment on the black, which looks really cool. I'm gonna trim off one of those little flags there. That way I can kind of layer it on the side of my card so that the flag isn't sticking out on one side. And then I've added foam dots to all of my characters and I can start to layer those on to my card and kind of create my little comic book scenes for my cute little farm critters. I couldn't help but add another little I heart moo there because it's so cute and I love this card because it's really simple but it packs a big punch thanks to that peekaboo backdrop die. And then here's a look at all of the cards we made. And of course I had to play with the pivot pop-up again because they're just so much fun. So I love all of these cute different looks that you can get with these set. And these little farm critters are just gonna make anybody smile. So next up, we have some gorgeous projects from the design team. And this jar by Shari is absolutely adorable and it would make such a sweet gift or home decor. I just love them just hanging out in that little grass there. And then here's the card by Elena that inspired me to make mine. And this card is just, oh, it's so cute. We've got a really cute card by Elise, and I love this is just a simple one layer stamping. So you could really make a lot of these, which is really cool. And then we have another card by Elise that has some gorgeous inking. I love how she put those rolling hills and that striped yellow paper in the background. This card by Ivy is so sweet. I love how they're balancing on the happy birthday line border die. And then I love this by Letitia. I love the masking that she did for it. It's just absolutely adorable. And then here we have a really cute card by Lizzie. I love the rolling hills and that stitched wood grain backdrop as the sky is really, really cute. And then Lynette made an awesome peekaboo backdrop card and I love how the sheep is kind of jumping into that bottom scene there. And then Elise's peekaboo backdrop card is awesome. I love those googly eyes so much. Shari got inspired to make a pivot pop-up so it's nice and simple on the front and then a big wow on the inside. Absolutely adorable. And then here's the pivot pop-up by Jen that inspired me to make mine. I think it's so cute and I love how she used the pattern paper. It's just adorable. And then here's a little happy birthday version of the one that we made that was a Hey There card earlier. And then I love this scallop box card pop-up by Jen. It's just so cute. And then Audrey made something totally different and totally amazing. And we've got a little slider card with that sheep, which is just so adorable. And then I love this card by Yanea. I love that red stripe in the background. It's just beautiful. And these characters are perfect for our new mini picture frame dies. I love them in their little art gallery wall. <laughs> so I cannot wait to see what you guys create with Hey There. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.